Welcome back to pattern recognition. So today we want to look into a particular class of classification algorithms and these are boosting algorithms that try to unite multiple weak classifiers into a strong one. And today we want to look into other boost. So let's have a look at the idea behind other boost. Boosting generally is trying to build a more powerful classifier from weak classifiers. And you could say it is one of the most powerful learning techniques introduced in the last 20 years. It can be applied to any kind of classification system and you can get a bit of additional performance in any kind of situation where you really want to tweak out the last couple of percent in terms of performance. So the idea is to combine the output of many weak classifiers into a powerful committee. So it is essentially using the wisdom of the crowd. And the most popular boosting algorithm is called Adder Boost and was introduced in 1997. So a weak classifier is one whose error is only slightly better than random guessing. But you need to have a classifier that is better than random guessing. Boosting won't work with classifiers that are worse than random guessing. So the idea of boosting now is that you sequentially apply the weak classifier to repeatedly modified versions of the data. And this produces then a sequence of classifiers and the weighted majority vote yields the final prediction. So we consider now a two class problem with the class being either minus one or one. And given some observations D that have a sample and a class, we can then train classifiers G of X. And this then implies that we also have an error on the training data set. And this can be computed as the average error as one over N and then the sum over all the misclassifications, where i is the indicator function, which essentially checks whether this sample is true, then it returns one, otherwise zero. Now we can sequentially apply the weak classifiers to produce a sequence of gm of these different weak classifiers. And then you can combine the weak classifiers in a sum and the final classification of for g of x is then given as the sign over the weighted sum of the individual classifiers. So we need some weighting factors alpha, alpha 1 to alpha m, and they are computed by the boosting algorithm. Then each alpha weighs the output of the corresponding classifier. So you could summarize visually the boosting algorithm that you start with training some classifier. Then you compute the error on the training set. You reweight the samples, train a new classifier, compute the error on the training set, reweight the samples and so on and so on until you then stop at some point where you have trained M classifiers. So each boosting step consists of applying the weights to the training samples that essentially amplify the weight of misclassified samples. And initially you can start with the weights just uniformly distributed. So the first classifier in the sequence is trained just the usual way. And then for m greater or equal to two, the weights are then individually modified. And then the classifiers g, m with m greater or equal to two are trained on differently weighted samples. Now the weighting scheme at step m looks at the misclassified observations that have been produced by the previous classifier and there we have to increase the weights and the weights for correctly classified samples have decreased weights. So this then means that observations that are difficult to classify get ever increasing influence over the iterations. Each successive classifier is forced to concentrate more on those observations that were misclassified by the previous one. 
This then brings us to the adder boost iteration scheme. So you initialize your weights with a uniform distribution, then you set the iteration counter to one, you fit the first classifier onto the training data set, and you use the current weights. Then you compute the classification error. That is essentially a weighted sum of the misclassifications. Then you update the classifier weights. And here we use the classification error in order to guide us which classifier to trust more and which classifier to trust less. And then we can compute new sample weights, again, using our classification loss of our new joint classifier. And this way we can then go ahead and iterate over and over again until we have built the desired number of classifiers in our example M. Then we finally output the completely trained classifier. So you see that in every iteration of adder boost, we have to train a new classifier. So this version of adder boost is called the discrete version because each classifier returns a discrete class label. Adder boost can also be modified to return a real valued prediction in the interval from minus one to one. And instead of just taking any classifier for GM, the classifier may be used that results in the smallest error at step M. So adder boost dramatically increases the performance even of a very weak classifier. And we can do this by looking at some examples. So this is from the Technical University of Prague, where we essentially got the data from to generate those plots. And if you just start with a single linear decision boundary, you see that this problem cannot be solved. You will get something like this. And this is, of course, not a very good solution, but it will kind of perform better than a random classification. Now, this gives us the following misclassified samples. And now, because we were able to construct the misclassified set, we are now able also to compute updated weights for the next iteration. Now, let's have a look how this behaves over the training process, where we start in our first training with this simple perceptron classifier. And you see that we have a rather high training error. And now we do a second iteration. You see that the error is already slightly reduced. Then in the next iteration, we have a dramatic reduction of error. Then we have another sample that is added, error goes up, but with another plane that is added, the error goes down again. And now we can iterate this until we end at the desired number of classifiers of M. And you can see that the center is now very well classified towards the correct class. We still have some outliers at the boundaries, but generally this has a very good classification performance, only using linear decision boundaries on this problem that can typically not be solved with a linear decision boundary. So next time in pattern recognition, we will look a little bit more into the mathematical details of adder boost. And in particular, we want to look at the exponential loss function. So I hope you enjoyed this little video and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next one.